Oh hey guys, Hatch Kramish again saying, hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. One of the most entertaining series of the major back in Miami was Optic vs. Chonzo, and after the fact, Scrappy immediately going over to Dashi and exchanging a few words. Dashi now revealing what Scrappy said to him, how he responded. Much other drama though on the day as well. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I greatly appreciate it. Pro's having lots of fun it seems on Vista right now. Definitely a map that I feel like will be in the rotation once the pros get their act together and figure out what they are trying to do in this roster mania period first of all wanted to discuss this from tom henderson on x divides this is hilarious if what we're going to discuss is actually true so he discusses in a big article here the toxic work culture behind the scenes in x defiance the years of delays all the issues that have led to this point there was one specific quote here and i'm not going to go through the entire article because it details lots of things i'll leave a link down below but it was one quote that said the following one member has no design experience or people experience and has been given directorial powers because of personal friendships said one source who do you think this is possibly about and referring to? Can anybody potentially guess? It may not be about the Slayer, but it may be about the Slayer, right? So we know that X works on this X Defiant team. Mark Rubin, Infinity Ward developer, former Infinity Ward developer, he's working over there now at, you know, Ubisoft, one of the biggest game studios in the world on this X Defiant project. They've obviously known each other for some time. It, if this is about Pat, it would be hilarious just because Aix is often talking about the Friendship League cheese. You know, this guy's got picked up because he's friends with this guy. And maybe Pat's got his job as a developer because he's friends with these guys. You know, basically Pat's maintaining his job because it's Friendship cheese rather than because he actually has any idea what he's doing. So, I don't know. We don't, It might not be about him, but people thought this was rather entertaining, right? And maybe put two and two together and he might get four in this case. Few Lion Man cards to go through as well. Top six performance here for the Los Angeles Grillers. It's hilarious how terrible their respawn was, and yet still, they placed top six and secured a load of CDL points. Assault was a 56 card at this stage, a 56. Look at the damage, look at the hill time. Like, bro is doing nothing on the map, but still, they managed to get top six and their search and destroy was very good, especially at the major, right? So um, I can't believe this team really turned up as they did on LAN. I think they won three maps. or I think they've won three series all year online and they barely won any respawn maps online either. But yet they turn up to the major, they start to win some searches and they get the job done. So you've got to say it's commendable. This is the Carolina Rural Ravens. They have much sexier cards in terms of the numbers. Fellow had a bit of a rough time again, but I will say that... You know, if you consider Fellow's ice factor that he turned up with on LAN, probably deserved a bit more than this. Interesting to me that Gwyn is like a demon in the respawn, but his search and destroy is pretty terrible, really. He has a good first blood rate, but a 0.8 in search is pretty bad for... You know, because often the rookies that come in, they've just grinded S&D their entire life, as Gwyn has as well. So usually they're pretty good in that mode. But um, that's one thing that they'll need to think about. I think for Ravens, during this roster mania period, it doesn't feel like they're going to make any moves. There is a question whether they should consider it, just because I still think that Clay and Fellow might be the worst AR duo in the league online. I think that's a worthy clarification. But if they do have a facility and they're getting that all sorted out in Charlotte or wherever it's going to be, then hopefully that's going to turn things around for them online because they need to improve online if they want to start, you know, starting in the winner's bracket, which of course is also a nice thing to do and secure some more points from these majors. But top six, not a bad result. But honestly, for Ultra, their record was as follows. They lost zero search and destroys in their major one victory run. They lost zero hard points in their their major one victory run. This stage, they were five and eight in their search and destroys. Insight had a shocking stage for him in search, like a 0.78 in search, to be fair, like everyone kind of struggled in search, but Insight's usually a monster in search and destroy. This stage, he had a bad one. Control as well, he had a bad one and was the worst they are in the league in terms of kills for 10 minutes in control, but I guess Scrappy is doing this, so it is what it is. So another 99 card here from Scrap, and you've got to say, yes, Clinics has still been playing well, but in the same way that the New York subline is, is effectively Hydra and the boys, and I still feel like that's kind of the case, to be honest. It's basically true now of Toronto and Scrappy in some regard, at least when you get a stage like this out of Envoy and Insight, which was highly underwhelming. Now, a few things we've got to dive through and mention here. First of all, from Arsatis, actually, on exactly why he was dropped by the Seattle Surge. He gave some explanation on this on stream. He just talked about it for a couple of seconds, and he said that he'd been told that there was no reason for this announcement. He hadn't been told anything to this effect. So, I don't know what you guys think about this, but, um, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Rambo, right? Rambo 
knows the GM, he's the head coach of this roster. I'm sure that Arcetes knows why he was dropped. He wasn't performing, like, let's be real. But Rambo apparently didn't give him a straight reason and said, yep, there's no specific reason. We've just decided to make a change. And maybe in some regard that's easier. I don't really buy that that's a good idea necessarily. I'm sure that Arcetes knows as well. Like, he mustn't realise that he was underperforming and, um, you know, possibly wasn't being the best teammate from a few different angles. And it's not like Sergio even kept him as a bench player. Like, he's just gone. He's dropped. He's out of there. Like, he ain't coming back. That's how it at least seems as it stands. So um, this is what Serge are up to. But again, it's like, there is just no transparency from Serge. If what RC is saying is true, that they couldn't really give him a straight answer, then it just goes to show that Serge don't seem to put anything at face value, really. Yeah, now they're probably not. They're probably going to do the same thing as they did last time. Lol. Yes, I'm a free agent, brother. I am a... I got dropped. Awesome. Why you get dropped? No reason, bro. <laughs> that's, that's literally what I got, I got told. It was... There wasn't a specific reason. They splintered at Bravo. Reminded that me too. Bro, what happened to Awakening, man? I want to talk about Joe. I, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. That actually doesn't make any sense. He's got space I, I, you, want, you, want my, you want my conspiracy theory? You want my conspiracy theory? I actually theory? want it, yes. Because oh, I will theory. say, right, this one makes this, no this, sense. This is my conspiracy theory. I, I think he's got hand issues, and he just doesn't want to talk about it because he's just like, he knows if he talks about it, and he does actually have like hand issue type shit, he's, he was just going to get dropped. Well, that's so ultimate, that's, like, that's, that is an shirt? insane conspiracy theory. Dude. I mean, well, think, I think, think about tape, it. Right? He messaged me a, a, a year or two ago saying that he was having problems and he was like, trying "Oh, I didn't know advice. that." He's trying to get oh, advice. I didn't know that. And and he, well, I mean, a lot of players have messaged me that saying that more than half yeah. the league has, has messaged me saying. You're talking about the KT tape. You're talking about the KT tape. The KT tape is what gave it away. The KT tape on stream, bro. When I seen the KT tape, I. Yo, why is the, the the KT tape like? What is that like? I've used KT tape back in the day when I was going through like my ACL shit. When I was like tore my ACL and shit when I played ball, and I used to use that shit all the time when I was dealing with injuries. I feel like the only time people use KC, that KT tape is when you're playing through an injury. You know what I'm saying? When you're playing through an injury, guys, guys, that's not federal, bro. His hands were sore. It's not like a big thing. It's, 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 People have sore hands. Everybody's got sore. I, I didn't mean that to be a federal thing. I mean, he he's been playing for years since then, guys. This was years ago. You know what I mean? So, what do we think about Zuma's perspective on Awakening? Right? Is this anything to go by? I mentioned this at the time when we saw this tape on his wrist, and people were kind of speculating, "What is this about? What exactly is going on?" Of course, right wrist, which I guess is where most players will tend to have issues if it's I don't know carpal tunnel related or whatever. We even saw Sib right now of the subliners mentioned this on stream a few months ago that he was suffering with problems with his carpal tunnel I think as well so it's a massive problem in esports in general certainly in controller esports certainly for those that play claw I would say in general that's um you know some people play claw and it's absolutely fine I don't know if Awakening plays claw but regardless really if you're playing COD 12 plus hours a day for years and not really taking care of your hands and your stretching and these other things that some players and some teams and some coaching staffs and some you know performance enhancing directors I don't know they're bringing these ideas into their teams over the last couple of years and some teams are executing on this but a lot of players they don't look after themselves especially well and they certainly don't look after their hands and their fingers and all this type of stuff as well as they might otherwise do and that's what Zuma said that over the last few years he has had like half the league DM him to say hey Tommy you went through these problems back in the day what should I do to fix this or manage it or resolve it or whatever the case is and he says that yeah Awakening said that to him now a couple of years ago and that kind of implies that if Awakening hasn't done a great job taking care of it, then maybe things have got worse. But at the same time, if Zuma's right, that Awakening was talking about this a couple of years ago, he was frying a couple of years ago, right? And he was frying one year ago. So what has changed from last year to this year? That's the big question. Awakening, as of recording, he hasn't been officially dropped, but the feeling is that, yeah, he's basically guaranteed to be gone from the rocker right now after a very underwhelming start to the year. This guy was a guaranteed 1.2 for the last, since his entire CDL career. This year is a guaranteed 0.8. So I don't really know if Zuma's idea holds that much water in the sense that if he has been dealing with hand issues, it's it seems to have just like switched on. You know what I mean? Like if it's been developing for the last couple of years, he turns up this year and all of a sudden like he's washed or something or his hand issues are really affecting him. But he hasn't stepped away like he's continued playing in the team. 
either he's managing it or that's just kind of the level that he's playing at right now. Still think that he can be a valuable asset elsewhere. Like people don't tend to lose the talent, but the question has been, is the talent coming elsewhere? Is it coming from sound equalization cheese? Was it coming from when everyone would snake all the time and therefore it was good? I don't know. The, the, obviously the start glitch back in MW19, all these other things. So I would say it's probably more likely that Awakenings fall off is a combination of factors and maybe the hand injury if there is one. And obviously we see by this tape from a couple of weeks ago now that yeah, maybe there is something to that. But there's probably other factors in play as well. And also there's an argument that just Minnesota Rocker in general, they had Brian Saint last year, he's now gone, but he's on the Ravens. Looney is still there coaching the roster. Is there questions on how that team is set up from an AR perspective? Because, you know, Rocker had Cammy and he looked pretty bad. And maybe Cammy isn't that great anymore. He didn't look good on Thieves either, but that's something to say on that. They had a Tatch last year who was, you know, looks pretty they made it look pretty bad as well, though. Like there were times where Attach looked like, yeah, he was washed up and he was past it and all this. Now he's frying again on Vegas, you know. So um, I don't know if it's just Minnesota Rocco in their style or the way they try and set up their team from a strategic perspective or from a coaching perspective that just hurts some of their Slayer ARs. So maybe there's that involved as well. Difficult to say. Probably multiple angles to be considered on this one. But also there's this clip here from Dashi discussing what Scrappy had to say to him after their victory against the Trump Ultra back at Major 2 in Miami. So we know these guys are boys. There's been lots of talk as well over the last couple of months really in terms of if let's say Optic don't win an event this year, if Toronto don't win another event this year, then is Scrappy gettable, you know? Or even FaZe, if they you know, if they don't achieve what they want with Draza, could Draza be dropped for Scrap? I mean, that would be a timeline and a half. Or could Optic try and get Scrappy as well? Like, it's something to consider given how close these guys are, but I thought this is pretty funny. Them, right? It's hype, hype moment. Me and Ernie are boys. Hits me with the, yo, I beamed the shit out of you on Invasion. <laughs> and I was laughing. I was like talking shit back. I don't remember what I said. I was so turned. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> I just know he's going to be in team speaks. I just know he's going to be in the call. And he's just going to try to hold that over me. But I'm just going to let it slide. Because I wasn't even fucking shooting at the guy. I'm trying to shoot at his boy. And then he randomly just fucking turned into, like, a sentry gun. That's it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. <laughs> Drop 44. He could have said that too, but... But it was more like, since, like, it was more like, since we're boys, that, like, he was going to bring up, like, basically, like, the 1v1, like... I don't, I don't really count that stream. We'll, we'll, we'll let him, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you're beaming, man. Wasn't shooting at you though. So this was the screenshot right when Scrappy went over to Dashi and they were kind of joking around. It was interesting at the time just because, you know, Scrappy had just fried this series for the loss and an important loss at that. Going down to the loser's bracket, of course, this was in their winner's round two game where Scrappy dropped 44 on that invasion control, went on to lose the next map and obviously they were, you know, kind of joking around. We know these guys are very close and Dashi obviously talking some trash the other way just all in good fun but still people are like damn scrappy why is he uh you know why isn't he pissed off you know like maybe some competitors would be they don't want to fist bump the other team because they were annoyed that they've lost type thing difficult to read too much into that we also did get yesterday late last night very uh well i think it was pretty much when i woke up my time this is going on draza versus scrappy eight so Gwyn, RCT's Pro Loot with Draza, and then Scrap, TJ, Capsidon, and Yeez. They played a 4v4 Chow, and I think Draza won this one. Maybe not comfortably, but pretty sure Scrap lost all those he plays. So I don't know if there was a crazy amount of trash talk here, but thought it was at least worthy of mention. But just before we close out the video here, series wins per rookie of the season so far. Per Jay Nassim, baby, he's number one in the standings. He's got eight series wins so far this year. Geo, to be fair, has six already, and he's only been on that team for a stage so that's kind of impressive and it's Estriel and Linz at seconds crazy how Linz isn't number one here after the start the Minnesota Rocker had well they started bad then they turned it around and then they fell off big time again Gwyn at six Abuza at six Eric Green only at two Snoopy only at five so this is um you know far behind what some of the records have been obviously in previous seasons but that leads to a rookie of the year ladder looking like this so breaking point we still have it as Linz number one Gwyn number two which I guess you can justify, right? I think it's difficult to say because this year, all the rookies pretty much are on bad teams. That's just the nature of the way the league is right now. So maybe it shouldn't be considering too much how the team is performing and it's more about the individuals. But I think that Linz and Gwyn, you know, they're not guaranteed to be top two forever, especially because Geo is making quite the charge up the rankings. But very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.